know, not thinking so high of yourself. You know, we're we're at God's feet, worshiping Him. But if you want to be worship yourself, or you think you're so high and mighty, uh, you want to walk in the direction you want to walk in, but He wants to follow Him. And uh, so, if you would just go with me to Deuteronomy the tenth chapter. So this is about what does God require of man, and that means a woman, man, child, a teenage boy, or girl. It doesn't exempt anybody from this, uh, whether you a year old or a hundred and some odd years old. Many people are living past a hundred. You know, we're still a child to God. Deuteronomy the tenth chapter. What does God require man? And He has not changed. This, this requirement is the same in the Old Testament as it is in the New Testament. If you're wondering about me going back there, reading this. The 10th chapter and the 12th verse it says, uh, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you? But to fear and worship the Lord your God with obvious reverence and profound respect, to walk, that is, to live each and every day in all his ways, and to love him. God wants us to love him and to serve him in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, your choices, the choices we make in life. Before we make decisions, we need to say, is that of God? Is that something God will want me to choose? And and then your thoughts is my thinking the way God would have me to think. And your whole being, that includes your body also. You know, the way we carry ourselves, uh, the way we think, and the choices we make. And it says, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I am commanding you today for your good. And then it goes on to, um, Say, behold, the heavens and the highest of heavens belong to the Lord, your God, and the earth and all that is in it. Everything that we have belongs to God. And it says, yet the Lord had a delight in loving your fathers and your and set his affection on them. And he chose their descendants after them above all the people as it is this day. So circumcise, that is, remove the sin from your heart and be stiff-necked, stubborn, and obstinate no longer. God don't want us to be in this kind of condition. And then you just uh, stay with me for a minute. <coughs> Go to Deuteronomy, the 13th chapter. In the fourth verse, it says, You shall walk after the Lord your God, and you shall fear and worship him with all feel reverence and profound respect. And you shall keep his commandments, and you shall listen to his voice, and you shall serve him and cling to him. God wants us to hold on to him, you know, just uh, cling to him because we need to cling to God. It's not a, a moment or a, a, any time in our life that we should not because once our minds uh, turn away from the Lord and our thoughts turn away from God and our choices turn away from God, that's when we fall into sin and when we fall into trouble. We, we make all kind of uh, poor decisions and we uh, 
just uh, mess up a whole lot in our lives. And then we want to say, but God, let God, let it be us. Let it be us to turn away from God. And go with me for a minute with uh, Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter, the 13th verse. He said, it shall come about if you listen obediently and pay attention to my commandments, which I command you today, <clears throat> to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, your choices again. These are the choices we make in life. You know, any decision that we make in life, we should ask God about first. You know, is that a good decision, Lord? Is that okay with you, Lord? For me to do that? Is that something you want me to do? And then it again it says in your thoughts. If you think I'm wrong about your brother or sister or about something maybe they have done or said to you, no. You know, we had to have the thoughts of God and God would want us to have a, a beginning heart. But first of all, he only wants to put our trust in him, totally in him, constantly. So we had to, you know, we had to be careful about the things we think about and choose in that life. It says, with your whole being, that's your body. Your whole body. So what we do, give ourselves to Christ. You know, come to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I want to be your child. I want to be in your kingdom. Because it is a kingdom that we're deciding to give our, our entire self to him. And it's, uh, you know, many times we talk about, you know, when you in church or with God, you got to give 10%, you know, a time and offer it. But I'm here to tell you, children, that when we come to the Lord, we're supposed to give everything we have, our entire being, our, our thoughts, our mind. It's not just about some money. You know, and, uh, and the money that we earn, God allows us to earn. And he just asked him for 10% of that, he's going to bless that. But when he say your entire being, your, your choices, everything, he's going to bless all of that. Because it's a, you have a choice. It's a choice. I'm still in the 11th chapter. And y'all forgive me, I'm not listening to everything. I'm uh, recovering here. <clears throat> from sinus problems, as you can hear my throat. <coughs> but the Lord is working on me and healing me up. It says here also um, in the same 11th chapter, uh, the 14th verse says that he will give the rain for your land in his season and in the early fall rain and the late spring rain so that you may gather your grain and your new wine and your olive oil. He will give grass in your fields for your cattle and you will eat and be satisfied. And what do you mean by that? The rain will come. You know, we need the rain for the uh, vegetables and the fruit and everything to grow. And when vegetables and fruit and grain grow, we can eat because it feeds the animals and we eat the fruit and vegetables and then we also uh, partake of food from the animals. But if you don't have rain, then you don't have growth of, of grass or vegetables or anything, and people will perish. And it says here in the 16th verse, be word that your hearts are not deceived, and that you do not turn away from the Lord and serve other gods and worship them. God don't want us worshiping anyone. And uh, certainly no no other false uh, gods or false religion. He said already that his commandment is a, a requirement of man is to, that you that we're supposed to love God. That's a requirement. It doesn't say I want or if you can. And it says, uh, or else the Lord's anger will be kindled 
and burn against you, and he will shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, and the land will not yield its fruit, and you will perish quickly from the good land which the Lord has given you. See, God gives us so much. And the requirement that he is requiring of us today, children, is that we are to love him. Now just for a brief minute, go with me to Romans 8, chapter. In eight chapter, and I'll just start there with the uh, 27th verse because, you know, we really need the Holy Spirit. Uh, in fact, I'll read the 26th verse because we can't do this on our own. See, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we receive the Holy Spirit. This, this is how we are able to walk with the Lord. It says in the 26th verse, in the same way the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weaknesses. Because we do be weak. We in, we in flesh and blood, just like Christ was. And when Jesus Christ was uh, baptized, he received the Holy Spirit. It came down on him and said, as a dove, and it remained with him. And after he received the Holy Spirit, he went into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit guided him in the wilderness, and he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. While he was in the wilderness, he was among wild animals and all kind of things. But it said the angels of God ministered to him. Those angels of God ministers to us also, children. And if we have the Holy Spirit, it says again, in the same way the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness. It's not just saying that. He really does help us. And that's not my word. That's the word of God. And a lot of people be saying, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. It's just too much uh, for me to bear. Uh, by myself. No one understands but the Holy Spirit does. Go to uh, John the 15th chapter and keep your finger there in Romans 8 chapter, please. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says here in the John the 15th chapter, the 26th verse. But when the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, Counselor, strengthener, standby comes, whom I will send to you from the Father. That is the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father. He will testify and bear witness of witness about me. See, we receive the Holy Spirit. He gives us the Holy Spirit. It says again in the 16th verse, the seven, uh, 16th uh, chapter, the seventh verse, it says, "But I tell you the truth." It is your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you, to be in close fellowship with you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world about the guilt of sin and the need for a savior and about the righteousness and about judgment about sin and the true nature of it because they do not believe in me see the holy spirit convicts the sin that be in us and he will guide us through it uh, the 13th verse said but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth full complete truth but he will not speak on his own initiative but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message regarding his Son. He will disclose to you what is to come in the future. He will glorify and honor me, because he, the Holy Spirit, will take from what is mine and will disclose to you. All things that the Father has are mine, because of this I say that he, the Spirit, will take from what is mine and reveal to you. God loves us so much, he's given us his Holy Spirit to guide us, to strengthen us when we're weak. 
So we won't fall into temptation of sin. Now go back to Romans, the 8th chapter, the 26th verse. This is the way we, we have to, uh, a requirement of us, children that are saved, that we had to uh, walk with the Lord. We had to walk with him by the Holy Spirit leading us, not with us leading the Holy Spirit. So we had to do what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. And it says here in the 26th verse, in the same way the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weakness, we do not know what prayer to offer, how to offer it, as it should be. But the Spirit himself knows our need. And at the right time intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts know what the mind of the Spirit is. Because the Spirit intercedes before God on behalf of God's people in accordance with God's will. So we're not by ourselves. No matter what we're going through, the Holy Spirit of God is with us, children. And he's going to God, getting from God what God wants us to do. He's going to God to get from God what our God is going to build us up and strengthen us up in our weaknesses. Because we're here to serve the Lord. The Holy Spirit is serving God through God in Christ. Protecting us and shielding us and counseling us through everything we can go through every day of our life. It says, uh, and we know with great confidence that God who is deeply concerned about us, and he really is concerned about us, and he really wants us to do the things he said. That's why he kept saying it over and over again in the Old Testament. He's saying it here in the New Testament. Causes all things to work together as a plan for those who love God. And to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. He says, for those whom he foreknew and loved and chose beforehand, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son and ultimately sharing his complete sanctification so that he would be the firstborn, the beloved and honored of among believers. <clears throat> and those whom he predestined he also called and those whom he called. He also justified and declared free from the guilt of sin. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly uh, uh, diet. And it says, what then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can, who can be successful against us? He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? God is for us, children. He wants you to live an abundant life. But the only way you're going to have this abundant life, you have to do the requirements that God has set before you. It says, He whom will bring in charge against God's elite, His chosen ones. It is God who justifies us, declaring us blameless and putting us in a right relationship with Him. See, when we receive Christ, we're in a relationship with God, we in fellowship with Him. We in fellowship with him. It says, Who is the one who condemns us? Christ is the one who died and paid our penalty. He's not here to condemn us. He gave us life for us. It says, And more than that, who raised from the dead and who is at the right hand of the Father, interceding with the Father for us. So no matter what we have done, children, we, he has paid that penalty. He paid for my sins I, I did yesterday, the day, and the ones that's in the future. But no, he don't want me to continue to sin because he has provided a way through the uh, Holy Spirit of God so we don't fall into temptation. But he's already paid the penalty. 
Because he says we're just like sheep, we're like lamb. He know every now and then we're gonna stray. Then we're gonna do something foolish. But he's gonna take us right back in. He's not ever letting us out because he's with us all the time. He doesn't want us to turn back to him. That's all. Turn back to him. He, he wants us to be aware, as it says in Deuteronomy 11, chapter the 16, verse B, aware that your hearts are not deceived. And many times children be getting tricked out here and deceived. He don't want us to be the secret that we don't have to if we don't quench the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit be telling us all the time, do not go there. Don't go here. Don't listen to that person. Don't do it. But when we do do it and we fall into something, we can turn away from it. We don't have to stay there. Let the devil beat us up. I'm talking about, oh, you did it. So what? Yeah, I did it. Yeah, I messed up, devil. But the Lord is my father, and I shall not want. He's still accepting me because I repented of my sins. You know where you're going. To the lake of fire. Don't be trying to tempt me so I can go with you. I'm not going with you, devil. And so it says, be aware that your hearts are not deceived and that you do not turn away from the Lord and serve other gods and worship them. And see, any time that we're not uh, walking the way God tells us, to walk, you know, not loving the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might, with our entire being, then we're turning away. It's as simple as that. We're turning away. We're busy looking at other things we don't have no business looking at. But stay with me, because the devil be trying to mess with you and me when we mess up. It says that, uh, as I was reading in the third or fourth verse, that at the right hand of God interceding with the Father. That's where Christ is on the right hand side. It said, who, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I mean, I know some of y'all have never failed, made any mistakes, or never sinned, but I have. So I can read this. It said, who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Nobody can separate Christ from me. It said, well, tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword just as it's written and forever remains written for your sake we are put to death all day long we are regarded as sheep for the slaughter yet in all these things we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory to him who loved us so much that he died for us. So don't let nobody put you down and make you feel bad. We got a king that's king of king and lord of lords. And it says, uh, for I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt, neither death nor life nor angels or principalities nor things present and threatening Things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, there's nothing that can separate you. So if you're feeling a little sad and down today, just, just shake it off. Because the joy in the Lord gives you strength. People, you shouldn't feel down and depressed when you know you got a risen king that's sitting at the right hand side of the Father making intercessory prayers for you and me. All we had to do was not turn and remain with him. Now turn to John, the 15th chapter. You need to know that, uh, that he has you. I already told you that you, that you have the Holy Spirit. And don't take that lightly at all. Not at all. It says here, uh, uh, this is Jesus. 
I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. And so we be going through some things when we, we belong to the Lord and we are his sheep, but he had to prune us. He had to, uh, things on us that shouldn't be there, like on plants, you know, the uh, plants and branches be breaking a little bit or they be, the leaves be getting all dried and crampled and uh, messed up. Those are broken off or, or cut off. And sometimes it, it seems painful, but he's not putting us away. He's, he's building us up and strengthening us so we have more fruit. And we have to remember, we are his representatives out here. So we can't be just look at any kind of way, doing any kind of thing. You know, we have to watch the choices we make and how we're thinking and what's coming out of our mouth and what we're doing. Because we are his representatives. It says in the third verse, you already clean because of the word, which I've given you, the teaching which I have discussed with you. And that's why it's so important for us to read the word. Come together, you know, if you're out there, you should be around other Christians who read the word and study the word. So you can grow strong together. Walk together as God will want us to walk. It says, remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine. You can't, if you're a plant, you can't, uh, the flower can't take itself off of the plant, off of the vine and expect to, to live it, to be uh, laid on the side in a day or so, it just withers away. It's good for nothing. And that's the way we are when we turn away from the Lord and, we, and we, we're not with him. We start wilfering. We stop uh, being fruitful. It says, neither can bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. It says, I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. But otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. See, when we were God, we, get, we have life. That's what that vital means. It's real vital to remain with God. That's how you have this, this abundance of life. That's how you have this joy for life. Because you don't have to want for anything. It says, anyone who does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch, withers and dies, as I just said. And they gather such branches and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united. And my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And that is so true, but the purity, you know, it, it says that, but you have to love God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, your entire being. That's with your choices and your thoughts. And many times the choices we make get us in trouble. That's why our life be messed up. And you would say, I've been going to church, I've been reading, I've been praying, but the choices are not of God. And he mean that when he say, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, your choices, your thoughts, your entire being, that, this is your body. Belongs to Christ. It's not yours anymore. Mm -hmm. We're here to serve the Lord mm -hmm. with everything we get. And uh, uh, go to John the thirteenth chapter. Mm -hmm. so I'm speaking of love, and I mean the love. I'm speaking of is the love of God. And then He also, Jesus speaks of the love of God also, as I already read before. But uh, this is just making it plain. John the 13th chapter, he has here in the 34th verse. I am giving you a new commandment. And, and see, he's giving us this new commandment, but the first commandment I read 
which used several times in Deuteronomy. We, we had to keep that one also. You can't even keep this one if you don't keep <laughs> the love of God all, with all your heart and all your might. You're not going to be able to do this one. And this was uh, the third and fourth verse is I'm giving you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you. So you too are to love one another. And that, that uh, it says, but by this you will know that you are my disciples if you love and, us, and have an unselfish concern for one another. God wants us to love one another just as we are. Not because you buying me something or you gave me some money, I'm supposed to love you. You're supposed to love me because he, God loved me just as I was, just a wretched little nothing. He accepted me. I didn't have to be on somebody's, uh, uh, have all these degrees or uh, knowledge or a big fat bank account or anything like that. He just loved me just as I am. And I've changed and have uh, gotten much in my life in these years I've been here. It's because of God. Mm -hmm. It's not because of me. He just blessed me uh, that way. And so God wants us to, uh, to love one another. And, um, you know, love him. Now, if you go back to the end, keep me. I'm going to end this up here. Because it's a consequence, as I said, of love and Lord, with all our heart and soul. Uh, 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, the 15th verse, it says, But it shall come about if you do not listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God. Be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes which I am commanding you today. Then all of these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Uh, that's what will happen. You'll receive uh, curses. And I don't know about you, children. I want to receive the blessings of God. That's what I want to do. And if you go with me to the first verse in the 28th chapter, the same chapter. Uh -huh. I, I just want to read to you the, the blessings right now. It says, Now if you shall be, now it shall be, if you diligently listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments, which I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. All these blessings will come upon you. And overtake you if you pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city, and you will be blessed in the field, the offspring of your body, and the produce, the produce of the ground, and the offspring of the animals, and the offspring of the herd, and the young of the flock will be blessed. Your basket and kneading book will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and, and be blessed when you go out. And the Lord will cause the enemies. So if you have enemies in your life or anybody uh, perpetrating a fraud in your life trying to overtake you with, uh, with any kind of uh, ill thoughts or any kind of actions against you. It says here in the seventh verse, the Lord will cause the enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. And they will come out against you one way and plead you for you seven other ways. So he he get them off your back. Those are the blessings you receive when you when you honor the Lord. And then and not just honor him, but you, you love him with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your and see your mind. So your thinking gotta be right too. You know your mind and your heart. With your entire being. And it goes again, your choices, your thoughts. Uh, God is giving it all of You don't want to be cursed, as it says here in the 28th uh, verse. <laughs> because uh, the curses, you, children, you really don't want to have any of that. Um, the 28th 
25th verse in that same chapter says, uh, mm -hmm. well, maybe the 24th, it says, the Lord will make the rain of your land power and dust. So you won't have no rain. You don't have no crops or vegetation or anything growing. It said from heaven, it will come down on you until you are destroyed. So instead of rain of your land, powder and dust will be coming down. It said the Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You will go out against them one way, but flee before them in seven ways. So it's just the opposite. And you will be an example of terror to all the kingdom of the earth when they see your destruction. Your carcass will be food for all the birds of the sky and beasts of the earth. And there will be no one to frighten them away. The Lord will strike you with boils of Egypt and tumors and the scab and itching and you cannot be healed. So some things out there, uh, man can't even heal you from it. But if you honor the Lord and love the Lord with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, you're in charge being, you won't have to go through these things. So I just wanted to uh, bring that to you tonight. If you get a chance, read Deuteronomy 20. Chapter. To read the chapters in the Bible so you know just how good God is to us. But you do have a choice. You can either accept the blessings or the curses. God is good to you today and he'll be good to you tomorrow. But you must, that's a requirement from God. First commandment. And you had to honor that. And that's what my lesson was tonight. I appreciate you listening. May God continue to be with you. And may you continue to be with you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen.